Okay, today's lesson is uh, section 7.3. Um, it deals with formulas involving polygons. So if you look at the learning targets, you can see we're going to have three rules or formulas. Uh, first, we're going to develop those rules. We're not just going to give them to you. It says, I can develop the rule for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. I can develop a rule for the sum of the exterior angles of a polygon. And I can develop a rule for the number of diagonals in a polygon. So those are going to be the three rules that we're going to find or develop and then we're actually going to practice kind of using those formulas to solve different kinds of problems. So the first one here is the sum of the interior angles. So that's what we're going to work on in this chart below. All right. So some of this we know. Uh, if we have three sides, we have a triangle. You can draw yourselves a little triangle. And I know from the previous sections that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So if I have four sides, I have a quadrilateral. We've talked about that word already. I can draw any old quadrilateral. And now how do I know the sum of the measures of the angles? Well, it's easy enough. If I take that quadrilateral and I connect two of the vertices there, don't I create two triangles? So that would be 2 times 180, which would be 360. All right, so if I have five sides, the word for a five-sided figure is a pentagon. You've probably heard that before. Try to draw yourselves a pentagon. And now using that same strategy, can we pick a vertex, any vertex on the pentagon, and kind of draw in diagonals to create triangles? If you watch me do it here, hopefully you see I've now created three triangles. Well, each one of those triangles represents 180 degrees in angle measures. So I now have three of them. 3 times 180 is 540 degrees in a pentagon. Let's keep going. A six-sided figure is called a hexagon. A hexagon looks maybe something like that. If I pick a vertex, I'm going to pick one towards the top, and then I start drawing in diagonals, I can get three diagonals in there, which creates one, two, three, four triangles. Four times 180 is 720. Let's keep going. A seven-sided figure. This one you might not have heard before. It's called a heptagon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I pick a vertex and I draw my triangles in again, I'm sure you can guess, you're seeing the pattern by now. It should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 triangles. So 5 times 180, that's 900 degrees and a heptagon. Eight-sided figure, you drivers better know this, that's an octagon. Something like that. If I pick my vertex and I try to draw in diagonals, right? Maybe that's the last one we'll draw. You can see we should have one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. So six times 180 is 1,080 degrees in an octagon. All right, we'll quit drawing these figures because this is getting hard. We'll just call a nine-sided figure. The name for that is called a nonagon, right? And you can see the pattern. An eight-sided figure had six triangles. Seven had five. Six had four triangles. So hopefully you can see that a nine-sided figure should have seven triangles, which is seven times 180. That's 1260. A ten-sided figure, maybe you've heard of this one, that's a decagon. So if it has 10 sides, the pattern seems to be two less sides or two, or two less triangles based on number of sides. So that would be eight triangles. And eight times 180 is 1,440. I notice I skipped 11. There's no fancy name for an 11. It's just an 11 gun. But a 12-sided figure is called a do decagon. That's a 12-sided figure. So if it has 12 sides, it has two less triangles, which would be 10. So that would be 1,800 degrees for the sum of the interior angles. A 15-sided figure is called a penta for 5, deca for 10, gun, a penta, deca, gun. 
So if it has 15 sides, it'll have 13 triangles. So 13 times 180, we can do that calculation later. More importantly, if we just have n sides, we call it an n-gon. And so we would have n minus 2 triangles, and then we'd have to multiply that by 180. So you can see we get to the formula. I think I'm off the screen here a little bit here. Let me scoot this up. So it says if a polynomial has n sides, then the sum of the measures of the interior angles, we use capital S for sum and small i for the sum of the interior angles, is 180 degrees for each triangle, and there would be n minus 2 triangles. So let's kind of box this in. This is your first formula, and then you can kind of see how we derived it, just sort of by looking at the pattern. So that was that first target. All right, let's keep going. Let's turn to the next page. You're going to like this one the best. All right, this one's for the sum of exterior angles. All right, so talking about an exterior angle, we talked about an exterior angle at a triangle. It's the same idea in a polygon. You extend a side and you create that exterior angle. We're going to talk about just one exterior angle at each vertex. So it says exterior angles can be found by extending one of the sides. What is the relationship between an exterior angle and an interior angle? Well, hopefully you can see right here that they add up to 180. Same thing here, 180. So each one of those pairs, an interior and an exterior, together add up to 180. So let's write that in our first blank. Some of the interior and their exterior angles right, would be 180, and I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them, so 180 times 5, that would be 900 degrees for the sum of all the interior and exterior angles. But now remember, we're only trying to find exterior angles, the sum of the exterior angles. So I only want 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. I want those angles. Right now I have those angles plus A, B, C, D, and E. But I know how to get A, B, C, D, and E because that's the sum of the interior angles. So if you look at the previous page and you look up pentagon, you'll see that the sum of the angles in a pentagon was 540. So if they all add up to 900 and the interior ones add up to 540, I can subtract 900 minus 540 gives me the exteriors must add up to 360. All right. So I give it to you again. I'll start an easier example here. Let's do a triangle, right? All the interior and exterior. Well, interior and exterior, that's 180. That's 180 and that's 180. So that's 180 times 3, which is 540. Interior, well this is a triangle, so the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So then to get the exterior, we would take 540 minus 180, and that's hmm, 360. That's what we got on the pentagon up above. Well, let's try it one more time. Interior and exterior, so there's 180, another 180, a third 180, and a fourth 180. So 180 times 4 is 720. Now this is a quadrilateral, so I have four angles. So let's cheat. Let's look up on the other page. A quadrilateral, the sum of the angles, interior sum of a quadrilateral is 360. So now to get the exteriors, if I take 720 minus 360, oh, look at that, I get 360. So yes, it is as simple as that. The sum of the exterior angles, one at each vertex, we write S for sum, E for exterior angles, is just simply 360. So there's absolutely no calculations to make. It's just that one value. It doesn't matter how many sides it has. The exterior angles will always add up to 360. All right, we have one more formula. It's maybe the trickiest one to see, but it's not hard to use. So this is the one dealing with diagonals. All right. So I gave you some figures. This is a triangle, obviously. It has three sides, and it has zero diagonals. All right. The next one over here is a quadrilateral, and it has four sides, and we can easily count. It just has two diagonals. So let's come over to this one. I didn't draw the diagonals in, so go ahead and do that. I'm going to start at the top vertex. I'm going to start counting here. One, 
two, three, four, five. So it has five diagonals. So just looking right now, I see no pattern that I, that's visible to me. Three gives me zero, four gives me two, five gives me five. Let's try six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I think I got them all, so that's nine diagonals. Well, again, that doesn't help in me seeing the pattern, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at how exactly I drew them in, right? So if you remember back here, I started at this vertex and I put one, two in from that vertex. And then I went to the next vertex and I drew in two more. So it looks like from each vertex I could draw two diagonals. So at each vertex I had two diagonals. And there were five vertices. So that means two at each vertex, and there were one, two, three, four, five. That should be five times two, which is ten. But I didn't have ten, I only had five. Well, look what happens. Once I get to this vertex, I go to draw in two, but do you see how this one is already drawn? So I'm really only putting one in there. And when I get to this vertex, this one's already drawn. And when I get here, these are already drawn. So the problem is each one of these diagonals, actually we try to draw it twice because we draw it from this vertex, but then we try to draw it from the other vertex. So I have to then take that 10 and divide by 2. So let's try that over here, right? Let's start with the vertex. How many diagonals can you draw in from each vertex? We had 1, 2, 3. Okay, there's a little bit of a pattern there. This, for five sides, we had two diagonals at each. So here I'm going to say at each vertex, I had three diagonals. And then how many vertices there are? Well, if it has six sides, it has six vertices. So one would think it's six times three, which is... 18, but then remember once I get around to this side, I've already drawn this diagonal in, so I have to cut it in half because I'm counting all those twice. So to develop a formula, right, uh, let's talk about this first one. At each vertex we had two diagonals. At each vertex we had three diagonals. So for five sides, we could draw two at each vertex. For six sides, I could draw three. For four sides, I could only draw one. So I'll, I'll put here at each vertex, I draw one diagonal. So four sides gave me one, five sides gave me two, six sides gave me three. If you look at that pattern, four sides gave me one, five gave me two, six gave me three. That means there are three less diagonals per vertex than the number of sides. So I would start by saying I need n minus three diagonals at each vertex. So that represents this number, this number, and this number. So if we had seven sides, I would have four diagonals coming from each vertex. Now then we multiplied that by the number of vertices. Well, if there are four sides, there are four vertices. Six sides has six vertices. So we have to multiply that by n, which is the number of vertices. But then remember what we did here? We had to divide by two because I was counting all those twice. And I'm going to say counting twice, so we have to eliminate that. So there's my formula. All right, let's put it in a big box right here. The number of diagonals is that. The number of vertices or sides, minus 3, times that n, all divided by 2. All right, so let's apply these formulas. All right, first one, find the sum of the measures of the interior angles. You can look on the previous page. I'm going to write down the formula for you. 
180, remember the degrees in a triangle times the number of triangles you get, which is n minus 2. So let's count the vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's just simply 180 times 8 minus 2. That comes out to be 180 times 6, which is 1080. So easy enough to really apply them. Find the number of diagonals that can be drawn in a pentadecagon. So yes, you're going to need some vocabulary. That has 15 sides. So I'm going to go up and use my formula here that's in this orange box. The number of diagonals would be 15 minus 3. That would be the number of diagonals per vertex. And then I have to draw those at each of the 15 vertices. But then I'd count them twice, so I would divide by 2. Right? If you calculate that, that comes out to be 90 diagonals in a pentadecagon. All right, these last two problems are going to take you in the opposite direction. So notice this one says, how many sides does the polygon have if the sum of the measures of the interior angles is 3240? So notice they're giving you this value right here. They're telling you the sum, and they're asking for the number of sides. So I'm going to use this formula again, but I'm going to use it in a different way because they're telling me the sum is 3240 and I'm going to look for n. So there's a couple of different ways you can solve this. Some people like to distribute the 180 and then solve. I'm just going to divide right through by 180 and you're really going to want your calculators on hand to do those. If you divide by 180 you get 18 equals, here it cancels, n minus 2 which means n would be, there'd be 20 sides in that polygon. And then finally here on number 4 uh, it's the same diagonal formula, but notice this time they're telling you it has 135 diagonals and we're asking for the number of sides. So much like the example above, we're just going to use the formula in a different direction. So I'll write it down for you. Here was the formula, All right? but now I know the diagonals are 135. So I'm going to say 135 equals n minus 3 times n all over 2. These are going to be the tougher ones to solve. Um, to get rid of division by 2, I can multiply both sides by 2, so I get 270 equals n minus 3 times n, and hopefully you're realizing this comes out to be a quadratic. If I distribute that n, I get n squared minus 3n. To refresh your memories, to solve a quadratic, I have to get it equal to 0. So I have minus 270. This one actually does factor. It's not so nice. If you can't get it to factor, you can use your calculator and get quadratic formula. But it actually does factor. The numbers aren't so nice. It's n minus 18 times n plus 15, which means n would be 18 or negative 15. Well, n is representing the number of sides, so it cannot be a negative number. So there must be 18 sides in that polygon. And that's it for this lesson.